So in the last video we looked at exponential, or sorry, geometric growth with where a sequence was getting bigger and bigger or a quantity of something was getting bigger and bigger. Um, so now we're going to look at exponential decay now, which means things get smaller and smaller. So we're going to look at this problem of Vinny borrowing $10,000 from his parents to buy a car. And the parents agree to lend him the money interest-free as long as he makes some payments at the end of each year. And they agree that on a repayment scheme which results in Vinny owing 10% less at the end of a particular year than at the beginning of that year. This repayment schedule lasts for eight years and at the end of the eight years he makes one final payment to pay off the loan. So they want us to fill out this table. So at the end of year one, Vinny hasn't made a payment yet. So he still owes his parents $10,000. Now, it says he's going to pay off 10%. So if he pays off 10%, well, 10,000 times 0.1 or 10% is $1,000. So that means at the end of year two, he still owes them $9,000. If he pays off 10%, which is $900, he's then going to still owe them $8,100 at the end of year three. And if he pays off 10%, which is $810, well, $8,100 minus $810 means he owes them $7,290 at the end of year four. So it says, find the common ratio in this situation. So remember, to find the ratio, you have to go term two, which in this case is 9,000, divided by term one, which is 10,000, and you get that the common ratio is 0.9. It says state the geometric growth factor. Remember the growth factor is the same as the common ratio. So the growth factor is 0.9 or 90%. Now if you look at this, he paid off 10%. So he still owes 90%. Something you need to remember about geometric sequence problems and series problems is that the R, the common ratio or the growth factor is always going to be the percent remaining. So if he had paid off 20% then this would have been 0.8 because there is still 80% remaining. So it says figure out how much he ends, owes at the end of the seventh year. So the first term was 10,000 the growth rate is 0.9 and we do this so we get out our calculator and we just go 10,000 times 0.9 to the exponent of 6 and he still owes $5,314.41 so we can use this uh, geometric sequence formula to help us count or determine things related to money and payments now, something that's really important to note is that when the growth factor is between 0 and 1, that means we have a decay problem. In the last video, we had a growth factor bigger than 1. It was 1.2. So if you have anything larger than 1 as a growth factor, it means you're going to have a geometric growth situation. Okay, so what they want us to do in each one of these problems here is they want us to state the growth factor for each of these situations. So it says the rate of inflation is increasing by 3.5% each year. So it's increasing, it's going to be 1.035. 0 0.035 is 3.5%, but if it's growing, this has to be bigger than 1, so it's 103.5%. The number of fish in a lake is decreasing by 2%. So if it decreased by 2%, the percent remaining is 98%, which is 0.98. Number of rabbits is doubling. Doubling means you multiply by 2. If it was tripling, it would be 3. Quadrupling would be 4, etc. Value of a computer decreases by 1 fifth. Well, if it decreases by 1 fifth, then there is still 4 fifths remaining. The last one's tricky. It says the ball rebounds to three quarters of its previous height. So this is the actual amount remaining. Three quarters is remaining. 
So your growth factor is 3 quarters, or you could have used 0.75. So let's look at another situation. We're going to look at our, a bouncing ball situation. This situation is very common. It shows up in lots of different uh, textbooks and exams and things like that. And it helps us illustrate a whole bunch of things about uh, growth and decay situations. So that's why one of the reasons why this, ex this particular example is fairly popular. So it says a rubber ball is dropped from the top of a building 20 meters high. Each time the ball bounces, it bounces up to 80% of its previous height. So there's our growth factor. It says calculate to the nearest centimeter the height of a ball after the 15th bounce. Okay, they're going to get us to do a few things here. And it says the Castillo decides to solve the problem using a geometric sequence with term 1 being 20. Explain why the value of term 15 does not give the answer to this problem. Well, they want to know the answer after the 15th bounce. So if we look at this a little bit pictorially, if this is the ground and you drop the ball from 20 meters high, when it hits the ground for the first time and bounces, you're at turn 2 in your sequence because turn 1 is 20. So after the first bounce, you're at turn 2. If you bounce a second time, after the second bounce, you're at term 3. After the third bounce, you're at term 4. So after the 15th bounce, you're actually at term 16. So to solve this problem, we actually have to find the 16th term, where the first term is 20, the common ratio is 0.8. Remember, 80% of the previous height gave us our common ratio. And this is going to be 16 minus 1. So if we go 20 times 0.8 to the exponent of 15, it tells us the answer is 0 0.70 meters, or that's the same as 70 centimeters. Now another person, Nicolette, argues that the value of term 15 should be the solution to the problem. Explain why the first term in Nicolette's sequence does not equal 20. Okay, well if Nicolette says after the 15th bounce you're going to actually get your solution, that means you have to have term 2 being the first term in your sequence to solve this if this is term 15. So if we go 20 times 0.8, term 2 is actually 16 meters. So if we find the solution using Nicolette's situation, then her first term is 16. We still have a growth rate of 0.8. And if we go 16 times 0.8 to the 14, we still get the same answer. We still get 0 0.70. So depending on what you use as the first term in your sequence, that's going to determine whether you're looking for the 16th term or the 15th term in the situation. It says, write an equation which represents the height of the ball after x bounces for each student. So if we're talking about Lacastio, his equation is going to be 20 times 0.8 to the n minus 1. And if we're talking about Nicolette, Hers is going to be 16 times 0.8 to the n minus 1 because they have different first terms in their sequence that they're actually starting with. It says write an equation which could be solved to determine the minimum number of bounces required for the <coughs> rebound height to be less than 2 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to use Lacastio's uh, equation. It wants to know how many bounces have to happen before the, the ball is bouncing just 2 centimeters off the ground. So our T of N is 0 0.02 because 2 centimeters in meters is 0 0.02 equals 20 times 0.8 to the N minus 1. Now, if we, div <coughs> if we try to solve this particular equation for N, we can't solve it. We did a question like this earlier in geometric sequences. We actually have to use 
our uh, graphing calculator to graph the left side and the right side of the equation. So we're going to graph point zero 0.02 in y1 and we're going to graph everything on the right side in y2. So we're going to get, I'll just move this a little bit so we can see those two equations. In y1 we're going to graph point zero 0.02 and in y2 we're going to graph 20 times 0 0.08 to the exponent of, oh not 0 0.08, sorry, 0 0.8 to the exponent of, and don't forget to put the x minus 1 in brackets because that whole thing is an exponent. Now if we look at our window settings, we're going to leave x at being 0 to 20, but y is going to be pretty small. Like y1 here has to be 0 0.02. So we're going to have y go from 0 to 5, but we're going to have an increase by 0 0.01 each time. Hmm. I can't see our first equation, which is y being 0 0.02. Let's try changing our window settings and have this go by 0 0.001. Let's see if that's going to give us a more detailed graph. Well, we might have to go further along the x-axis. Let's go, let's increase x to 50 and see if we can get a line. I think there is one down there, but it's really hard to see. So we're going to use the intersect feature of our uh, graphing calculator. We're going to go second function trace, choose number 5 for intersect, and we'll see if it gives us an actual point of intersection. It does, it actually intersects at point zero two at 31.95 so in, in actual at bounce 31 it will not have quite bounced that small so we're gonna have to go up to bounce 32 so it's gonna take 32 bounces to actually make this work now I had to play with the window settings a little bit here sometimes you're gonna have to monkey around with the X min X max and Y min Y max and remember if you aren't sure what to do with window settings, you can always make a table of values and look at the table of values to help you get your window settings. You can look at the Y1 and the Y2 to help you get your maximums and your minimums, the same with the X's. So that's uh, our geometric decay situation.